Creating a great looking 3D website is no small feat. It requires a lot of time, effort and most importantly, iteration. Hi, in this multi-part tutorial, I will take you through the journey of reproducing Atmos, an existing amazing 3D website. First, let's get one thing straight. Mistakes will be made. At the beginning, the website may not look like what we want to build. The key to tackling a big project like this and not being overwhelmed is to break it down into smaller, more manageable milestones. Let's have a look at what are the key things I want to reproduce. A loading screen, a floating airplane, animated background. You can also notice there's an advanced effect that impacts the lighting of all the items when the background changes. Noise and blur effects, fading clouds and text sections, the plane is following a curve line, there's an acceleration effect when you scroll fastly, a custom scroll bar, an ending screen. With each milestone, we will learn more about Web3D and get closer to the final result. By the end, I hope you will have a beautiful, fully functional 3D website that you can be proud of. Once you clone the repository Run Yarn and Yarn Dev, you should see a cube and can rotate around. Let's start with creating a background component for our two colors gradient. Import it in the experience, install Lamina library that we covered in the previous tutorial. Let's add an environment for basic lighting settings. Create a sphere with a scale of 100, add a layer material from Lamina. We set the side to three backside to see inside our sphere and let's add a gradient layer to our material with a blue and red color. The gradient is vertical, but we want it to be horizontal. We can change the axis prop to Y and adjust the start and end property to make the color less blended together. I found the color from Porco Rosso screenshot, but adjust to what you want. That's it for the moment, we will animate the color and lighting later in the project. I got the 3D models from Polypizza. I separated the helix on the plane to be able to animate it, and added subdivision on the clouds to make it smoother. If you are a bad person, you can also open the Network tab on Atmos and find their model files. Let's generate our model components with gltf.jsx. Create an airplane.jsx and paste the generated model. Adjust the name and the path to load it. Replace our cube in the experience with our plane. Nice! To animate the helix, add a reference to it. And in use frame, let's rotate it on the x-axis. Cool! To create this flying sensation, wrap it in a float component and adjust the rotation, scale and position. Nice! Now generate the cloud, fix the name and path. And let's handle an opacity prop, even if later I think we will add a custom shader to make it fade based on the distance. Let's add many clouds, the position are not important, it's just to build the foundations yet. Time to get to the curve line. We will use directly 3.js with a Catmull ROM curve 3. It takes vector 3 points and generates for you all the points to draw a curve between those points, based on the configuration you define. Declare a curve. Use memo to not reprocess it at each render. A new Catmull ROM curve 3 with our point from 0 to minus 100 on the Z axis. We want it to be a Catmull ROM type with a tension of 0.5, but you can try different things. Now let's generate our line points. Use memo and return curve.getPoints with the number of points we want in total on our line. For the moment, let's render a line with our point and a transparent white color. It's too high, let's adjust the Y position. Cool, but the curve is not smooth. We can adjust the number of points on our line. Now it looks better, but we have no perspective with the line. We'll generate a plane based on our curve. Let's create a shape of two points and look at the extra geometry from 3JS. We can pass the curve as the extrude path. What it does is it will extrude our shape to follow our curve. Add a mesh with the extrude geometry and a transparent white material. Now we have a way better visual than the line. Time to follow the line on the scroll events. 
wrap our experience inside scroll controls and disable the zoom on the orbit controls to be able to scroll. We now have a scroll bar on the right. We want our camera, plane and background to be together following the curve on scroll. Create a camera group. Inside we add a perspective camera. By default the canvas automatically add a camera. So let's get the settings we had on our camera and set make default to be the camera used by the scene. Declare scroll equal use scroll to get the current scroll data. And on use frame let's create our logic. We will get the current point on the line we are based on the scroll percentage. We use mat.round to get the closest index. Then we lerp our camera group position to the point on the line. Now when we scroll we are following the line. Let's slightly rotate our plane and camera based on the curve. Let's get the next point and calculate the difference between the x value from our position to the next position. This way we can determine if we go to the left or right. Math.py on 2 rotation is left and minus math.py on 2 is right. Based on that we generate an angle rotation variable with math.py on 3 because we don't want to go fully left or right. Because we can't alert a rotation, we need to use the quaternion. We create it from the order of our current rotation and passing the angle rotation to the Z. And then on our airplane quaternion, we can use slurp to smoothly rotate toward this direction. And wrap our floating plane in a group. Now our plane turns based on the curve. Let's also rotate our camera quaternion. It works, but it's way too strong. We can adjust our algorithm or increase the number of points on the line. Of course, there is still a lot to do to make it look like the real Atmos, but we have the foundations. We will continue it next week, so don't hesitate to subscribe to be notified when it's live. Also, consider hitting the like button if you find this video helpful. It helps this channel grow by showing it to more developers. Now you started your React Refiber training, it's time to jump to the next tutorial available here.